amusing as your savage dances are, once again I have proven the superiority of setting your nose to the grindstone and not mucking about. Now bring some refreshments in a proper mug, or I'll take back the coins of my home and country. Don't you heathens know the worth of a proper king's halfpenny? Uh, generous visitor, if our customs are so displeasing to you, perhaps you should find lodging elsewhere? Please? And leave you lot to your primitive ways? Tell them what I think of that, Squire Percival. Sir Roderick Ponce von Fontelbottom, the magnificent bastard, will do no such thing. He means to educate you all. Good lad. Found him wading in the mud, planting weeds. You can't keep your crackers crisp doing that. Can't help you if you don't know the horror of a soggy biscuit. I've given him dignity, and unless one of you has the will to deny that I'm your better, I suggest you start learning. We'll have you in proper trousers by the morrow. Oh, what's that? Someone stepping to the fore? Let's have a look at you. A woman? My dear, not sure what topsy cradle you fell from, but in my country a lady knows her place. Unless she's queen. The simple truth is that I have bested every one of you who has come forward, whether in tests of wit or combat. You faced a champion of king and country. Now, I didn't ask to land here, but if a storm is going to cast my ship into the very heart of such a dark empire, I'll bring the light of knowledge wherever I can. You must hunger for guidance. You're like children. I mean, only a handful of you could even grow a decent moustache. What kind of place is this? Can you now? Shall we put that to a test? I welcome the chance that you might impress me with a glimmer of intelligent insight. But I will acknowledge that I am likely to disagree just because I know you are... Uh, lacking. We will need educated men to judge the merits of our arguments. I've gone to great pains to learn your barbaric tongue, only to find that none of you has much to say. Can you convince me otherwise? I've heard a distinct lack of couplets and quatrains to say nothing of pentameters. Is it any wonder you people live as you do? I charge you with defending the heart of your people. If a group of judges determines that you have adequately done so, I will declare you the winner. Uh, whoever you wish. These five, standing here. I'm sure there will be a balance of opinion. The test must be fair. Go on, talk to them all to prove I haven't coerced them. We'll begin the debate when you're ready. Then we'll see how you fare in combat. Doubt you'll do very well. Like the rest, you're all just too damn skinny. Well, ready to set the ponies in motion, are we? Let's declare some rules and get to it. You don't mind if I make this interesting, do you? Good. Don't want to set you off your game, but I thought we should ensure that the process was more entertaining than a simple checklist of virtue. It will be a simple matter. Five judges, six topics. I'll pose my argument about why your foolish land stumbles like a child, and you try to answer. The judges will raise their arms to indicate whom they favor. Arms up for you, arms down for me. After six topics, if you have a majority, you are the winner. By the Queen's corset, if you get them all on your side at any time, I'll declare the match over. Now, shall we proceed? I will pull no punches, and I expect no mercy on your part. Let's see which of us is truly superior. Well, what shall be my first point of contention? I know the most basic of concerns for a culture, the currency of its economy. What manner of society would use the silver coin as the basis of trade? Gold is clearly superior, which you admit by using it for important statuary. Your understanding of what determines value is flawed. Your rebuttal? Oh. Well, a majority on your side, but the debate is not over yet. I call attention to the arrogance of your empire. You simply assume that all lands outside your borders are the domain of barbarians and monsters. How could you truly know they are uncivilized until you've proven it by conquest? Crush them beneath your heel. 
You sit here thinking while far-off lands yearn for direction, not unlike what I am attempting with you. Ooh. Well, a majority on your side, but the debate is not over yet. Shall I draw attention to your foolish reliance on personal combat? You've got strange dragon powder arms, but you waste them on spectacle and flying chariots. Any decently civilized people would have developed a proper array of personal sidearms by now, like old Mirabel here. Well, a majority on your side, but the debate is not over yet. I challenge your foolish beliefs and the irrational behaviors they produce. Dragons, spirits, and even talk of unresting dead. <laughs> Just look at the collective foolishness that you call a floating palace. The constant superstitious yammering of your peasants even has me seeing it. And how the bloody hell would you get a moat up there? It's ridiculous, I say. Well, a majority on your side, but the debate is not over yet. I say that you don't seem to understand the relationship between the ruling class and the peasantry. Your commoners are far too happy to be productive. A proper spiral of misery shows that they are doing a decent day's work. Your peasants only suffer because of foolish superstitions about the dead walking around. Well, you are clearly in the minority, but I can spare no quarter. To the next topic. This will be the final topic. If you don't have a majority at the end of this round, you will have to admit that I have outdone you. A simple criticism, your ridiculous clothes. Not a decently puffed pair of trousers to be seen. I ask you, what have you done on the pantaloon front? And why do you remain so clean? When any sane man knows, the only way to keep devils of the dark at bay is to be brash and to carry the air of the earth. Bathing is bad for the humors as well. Do you people know nothing of maintaining your bile? Well, it would seem that a majority of your fellows have decided your arguments were more persuasive. I expected no less. I could not expect a fair contest in the heart of your city. I was a fool to think otherwise. I seek satisfaction. You have bested me in debates, but true honor is decided on the dueling field. The entry hall here has walls to be up against, corners to be backed into, and floor enough on which to be down but not out. Whatever your metaphor, I'll beat it. Return to me when you are ready, and we will walk there together, just to ensure that no one gets lost or suffers an accident that would prevent a fair fight. Frankly, I don't know what you people are capable of. What? Good! Let's get this over with so I can return to schooling the rest of your fellows. I envy you. You are about to experience for the first time the skill that has forged an empire and traveled the world. There will be pain as well, but I imagine it will be almost worth it. I saw <clears throat> display of skill. It was a fair fight, Sir Roderick. Uh, w within the rules you specified. Yes, old boy, you've got it right. I was really sat down, I believe. Like the fall of the old bridge across the Grand. My humors are in disarray, I tell you. I suppose I should have seen it coming. Your win in the debate was a sure sign. I do believe I have underestimated the lot of you. Regardless, you have beaten me. That's a point of honor I cannot deny. Well, there's no other thing for it. Intended or not, you've earned a reward from me. The unsuccessful combatant in a duel must arrange a worthy gift for the victor. I wouldn't be much of an ambassador for my country if I didn't abide by its customs. The Duchess of Almsbottom's rules of engagement are quite clear on this matter.
Mirabelle is yours. Treat her well. She's a finicky lady. Right, that's all. Off my traveling trousers. We will darken this garden no more.